Alrighty, welcome to an eight-player cube league. Cube is back on Magic Online, so I like to mix it up here. Some team drafts, some opening ancestral recalls. I like that. So we are going to be slamming an ancestral and passing like a pest infestation, a brainstorm, a star, a skydiver, a mire, a bunch of cards that probably won't come back, and I don't really care because I got an ancestral and a mox. <laughs> All right, we're starting this one off strong. This is going to be a good one. So we're going to take mox emerald here, passing up a balance and a grist and an exploration, and yeah, not a whole lot else anymore. Any more power? No, no, no. I guess uh, I guess we'll have to content ourselves with this for now. So next up, there's Path and Caracas as white cards. I honestly, and Oust, I guess. But I think I would take Caracas over Path, especially this early. I can draft cards that work with Caracas. There's Coveted Jewel, but I do like the card. I just don't think you're supposed to take it quite this early. Same with Talisman. There's also Fire Ice. Fire Ice goes nicely with Ancestral, but I think Caracas is just such a messed up card. It's also basically colorless, so I'm happy enough to take it. And there's a fourth big Strip Mine. Okay, I'm in for Strip Mine. I mean, there's also Upheaval, but Strip Mine is a, deck you, a card you can definitely build around, and Upheaval requires a lot of mana, which I might not end up getting. I think I think Strip is just a much safer pick because if I don't end up getting anything that works with Strip Mine, guess what? I've got a Strip Mine. I can put the card in my deck. It'll be awesome. Upheaval, you have to have a pretty specific deck to have that thing work. So a very good start here. Ancestral Mox, Strip Mine, Caracas. This, this doesn't get a whole lot better. Mm, this pack does have Echo of Eons, so maybe you know the Upheaval would have been good, but I think I'll still probably take the Echo. I think Echo is a really powerful card, and... Nothing else here really is the same power level, even though I could take like a tri land because I have a strip mine or whatever. Let's just take Echo. I think that's fine. It, Echo is just a card that works really well with like discard effects, is a good draw seven if you're in a powerful deck. There's just ways to make it work. Even if I don't end up playing it, there's nothing I was giving up out of that pack. Like if that pack had like a ponder, if that pack had obviously a fetch land or. You know, anything like that, I would have just taken it. And here there's a Mind Twist, but I don't just I don't need another slow card. I'm not taking Mind Twist here. Mm. I mean, this pack's pretty bad. But I'd honestly rather have Toxic Deluge than Mind Twist. I just don't think Mind Twist is going to be the kind of axis I want to fight them on, especially since I have Ancestral and Echo to draw a bunch of cards. So I don't really like this pack at all. I think I will take the Toxic Deluge, but I'm really not, not thrilled by it. I'm going to put it in the sideboard for now. And this pack has Stomping Ground for a red green land. And the only reason I mentioned that is I have a green mox and a strip mine. A strip mine kind of likes green and red because of like red and six and ramen up and stuff. There's also Scrubland. I have a Caracas already, and I guess I have this Toxic Deluge. So I could take Scrubland as a potential way to just be like a multicolor control deck. There's Fatal Push as well, but I think instead of Fatal Push, I'd rather take Scrubland. I think I like Scrubland a little more than Stomping Ground in this spot, but. It's pretty close. And then here, we've got Bayou, but I think I'm going to take Kaido Shizuki. Kaido can, is actually a discard outlet for Echo. Can be decent like an Esper mid-range deck, and then like with Tate Deluge and whatnot, that seems like an okay place to be. Whoa, Brainstorm came back around. Well, I'm happy about that. I think I like Brainstorm more than Skydiver, though Skydiver is kind of nice with Kaito. I guess part of my thought with Brainstorm is if I just have Brainstorm and Ancestral, I'll just have a very consistent draw every game. Yeah, I like Brainstorm. I'm, I'm going to take that. Ooh, I'll be happy with Sea Chrome Coast too. Getting them, I think I like that over Hard Evidence because now I have good mana if I want to play a white card and cards like Swords to Plowshares, I guess Balance is already gone, but Swords to Plowshares, Wrath of God, Solitude, just like kind of the anti-creature stuff is very good in white and combine that with the card draw in blue. Yeah, you can get a bit of a stew going there. Ooh, and a free Odawara. I'll take that. Od Odawara is just a great card if you're if you're playing blue. It's just like an extra spell for free. Um, I'm not playing any of these cards. I guess maybe Gruff Triplets is the one I would be the most likely to play if I got like a flash or something. So I have no creatures so far. I have a Deluge and a Kaido is black. I have a bunch of blue, well, three blue cards. One of which is Echo. Oh, I'll, I'll spec on Sword of the Meek. This looks like a great place to do that. Also Dread Knight, whatever, Terra Sunder, whatever. All right. Pack two. Let's see if we can get some power. <laughs> We're looking for, I guess, Thopter Foundry. 
kind of looking for a win condition. Less than that, I would rather just get some good removal. Oh, there we go. Swords to Plowshares. This is exactly why we want those white lands. Swords is the perfect card to pair with Ancestral and Brainstorm, and it's just a great card, like no matter what. There's also a Flooded Strand that's not coming back, a Narset that's not coming back, a Raugren Triumph, a Council's Judgment and Creeping Tar Pit that actually could come back. But I'm, I'm going to slam Swords to Plowshares, and this is looking like an absurdly good Snapcaster deck if I end up seeing one of those. Shrapnel Blast, spicy. I, I guess Stern Scolding and Charter Course are both kind of decent here. Breeding Pool doesn't seem that impressive because I don't have any green cards, and green's not the best splash color. Leyline Binding... I guess I have a Scrubland, and I'm probably going to be three colors, maybe four. But Binding also wheels a lot. So I think given that I kind of like Stern Scolding or Chart, I guess there's also Walking Ballista. Ballista is a good card. Mm, I think I'll go with the Stern Scolding. I feel like having early interaction is nice. Oh, I love Counterspell. There's also Ramanop for Strip Mine, but I think I should just take Counterspell here. Jace would also be amazing if I wheel it, but it's having disruption that works against any deck is so important. Shame there's a Tundra there too that's not going to come back most likely. Oh, it, Spellseeker to go get Ancestral Recall or Swords to Plowshares? Amazing. I could even get Counterspell. Is Astral Dragon still here? I would have hoped they would have cut that. That card, I think, is not worth the slot. All right, well, we've got a creature now. It's a Spellseeker, and uh, I kind of like where we're at. I, I still am open to splashing Ramanop or... Better yet, finding a Crucible of Worlds for this strip mine. But even without that, we've got a pretty classic blue-white control deck. Maybe splashing Deluge and Kaito. That would, would not be bad. And then here, oh, there's a Mystic Confluence. Perfect. Also, Deserted Beach might come back around. That would be sick. Um, yeah, nothing else there that's like too interesting for me. Mystic Confluence in the five slot. Currently, Echo of Eons does not look good enough. I'm going to actually take it out for now. Obviously, the Sword of the Meek isn't going to be good if we don't find Thopter, but it'll be great if we do. And I don't. the reason I, I took Echo out is right now I only have one way to discard it, and mostly this deck is just looking to be a control deck. Also, that's a Hallowed Fountain. That is exactly what I want, especially since I've already passed a bunch of other blue-white lands. So it's Hallowed Fountain or a Triome. And as my options, like in terms of getting a land that taps for blue and white. Not that I have any fetches yet, but I could pick up a fetch. And Hallowed Fountain is going to be a lot better for me than Dig or Savannah, and we're not really a fast bond deck. Well, this is a kind of interesting pick, because there's Necromancy, which is a great card, and if I play black, having it to, to pick up one of their creatures can be nice. But I kind of want to take Portal of Phyrexia. If I end up getting a Tinker, Tinker Portal is a really good way to win, and I don't think this looks like a great Necromancy deck anyway. Underworld Breach. I do like Breach. Haven't seen LED or Brain Freeze, but I also don't have any red fixing. And V-Click looks both good in this deck and is fantastic with Karakas, so I'm just going to take V-Click. I know, I know. I love Breach too, but uh, Vendillion Click seems like... It seems like when you have Ancestral Recall, Swords to Plowshares, Spellseeker, and Counterspell, just like Mystic Confluence, all these really good cards, I don't need a combo to try to win. I can just put a V-Click in my deck and it'll be great. Show and Tell did come back, and I do have that portal, or I could take Tar Pit. I don't think I'd play Show and Tell with just the portal, and Tar Pit is an excellent, excellent card. I don't think I'm playing any of these cards, I guess. Sure. I'll take Uluwag. One thing also, you can, you can take Random Eldrazi for your sideboard in case you play against a Brain Freeze deck. It can be good to board in an Eldrazi to stop Brain Freeze from killing you. Granted, you shouldn't do that just like... If you have no way to use the Eldrazi and they have other ways to win the game, but if they're if they're short on ways to win the game and Brain Freeze is their main win condition, boarding an Eldrazi can actually be pretty decent. Oh, interesting. I'm not going to take Gush. I don't think that card's good, but there's Sacred Foundry and Iteration. I think I should just take the Sacred Foundry. I don't think I'm very likely to want to play the Iteration without Red Fixing, so I'll just take the Red Fixing in case I get a good red card later. Uh, sure, I'll take the Astral Dragon. Why not? And the world's pine worm, so none of my blue white lands wield. I guess I'll take Tundra or a turnabout. I could have had high tide and turnabout. Yeah, I don't think high tide quite gets there anymore. All right. So going into pack three, you've got a nice blue white deck. I guess the only white card I have is swords. Uh, and the only black cards I have are Deluge and Kaito, but I've got some good fixing and I've got some really powerful stuff. So. Could use some ways to close out the game. Thopter Foundry would be really nice. I don't want to open it. I want to see it like six pick or something. Oh, there's Flash. I didn't take 
Oh, I took the world spine worm. And I have Astral Dragon? Okay. I think I'll take that over Solitude or Prismatic Vista. Oh, I have Spellseeker too? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, the, my, my, my team draft instincts of just hating world spine worm <laughs> actually paid off because now I'm going to take this flash. Oh, I even have Gruff Triplets. So if you flash in Gruff Triplets, you end up making two six sixes. That's not that bad. All right. I'll take flash here and nothing that I really think is going to wheel. Oh, I would happily pick up a Mana Leak. Mana Leak is perfect for this deck. Okay. Okay. This, I mean, this is actually quite, quite a good way to go here. Don't care about Thassa's Oracle or Exhum. I don't really have that many different colors of cards, so I'm not really looking at like Sunken Runes or Plateau. I'm looking at Elite Spellbinder, because if I do end up playing a decent amount of white, Elite Spellbinder is pretty good. I think I'll take that over Treachery. I, I think Treachery is kind of bad now. It's just way too slow. Okay, this pack has, it has Mystical Tutor, which gets Ancestral and Flash. Mystical and for counterspells or swords to plowshares is really bad, so I don't want to do that. But getting either Ancestral or Flash is pretty good. At that point, I almost want just to put Astral Dragon in two and just have three cards I can pitch to or put into play with Flash, Flash, and then a bunch of ways to search it up. There's also Dismember, which is a great card, but I'm kind of into go a little bit more combo here. Oh, Library of Alexandria. Oh, and Thopter Foundry. Um, I've got to take library. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, Dr. Fenji can wheel. No one else wants it, you know, but even if I knew for a fact it wouldn't wheel, if like this was like pick eight and I knew it couldn't come back, I would still take library. It's too busted. Thopter Foundry is good, and if it comes back, I'll play Thopter Sword, but I'm not going to... I don't think I'm going to mess up my awesome library deck for that, for the off chance of that. And here... I really don't have any red cards I want to play. I'm getting past all this good red fixing. I guess I'll take Volcanic Island, and now I'd have two red duels in case I wanted to play something, because I'm not going to play Bone Crusher or Dynamo. I'm not playing any of these other cards. Watery Grave. I, I've got a couple black cards, so I guess I wouldn't hate Watery Grave. There's also Frantic Search and Pentad Prism. Pentad Prism is kind of nice, but I guess I can't cast any of these things anyway. There's also Lingering Souls. I don't want Frantic Search. This isn't really a Frantic Search deck. Mm, maybe Pentad Prism is actually just going to be better here. Just as a way to make an early play store up some mana. Wow, now there's Preordain and Teferi. I think Preordain is pretty busted. And I think I'm just going to take that. I, I, I do like Teferi, but I like Preordain a lot. Okay. So now we're down to only 21 land. <laughs> I could also play Echo of Eons if I really wanted to. I wouldn't be the best Echo deck, but I could see trying to play it off of Kaito, but also just to have a draw seven to tutor four with Mystical Tutor. It's not crazy. Whoa, Wheel of Fortune came back? I'm a little surprised by that, but I think I'm just going to take the Tide Tidebinder. I mean, I guess maybe I could take Wheel... I kind of wish I'd taken that show and tell now, just the way this deck has turned out. I could take Wheel, and having a draw seven to tutor four is nice. I have two red sources, and I have a prism. All right, you know what? Let's let's do let's do it. This deck's gonna got, ended up being a little bit more combo-y than I kind of thought it was gonna be. So I think having that seems reasonable. And now I can take Zagoth Triumph. I, I think that's. Oh, I'm not gonna play any of these other cards. So yeah, Zagoth Triumph seems fine. As kind of like a blue-black land, a tapped blue-black land. I think my mana is actually going to be fine. Oh wow, Thespian Stage came back. I could have could have sniped Depths. There's no chance I want Thassa's Oracle right now. I, I'm not going to play Sunken Runes either. Oh, Bobble, I will play. It's great with Library. I have a couple shuffle effects. I don't think Flashing and Ashen Rider is even that good. Thopter Foundry didn't wheel, huh? All right. Fair enough. Oh, hey, actually, hold on. Instead of Lotus Petal, I actually think I should take Urtai. Urtai plus uh, Caracas is pretty nice. And I feel like uh, just having another interactive playable seems pretty good to me. All right, so taking out the lands here, Emerald counts as well. I mean, this is 18, basically 18 lands. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I've got Flash to justify these three big things. And a lot of ways to find flash and a bunch of cantrips. 
All right, I like how this looks. I don't think I want the Echo Vians. I actually think I'll be fine without it, but I'm happy enough with the rest. No, no uh, Thopter Foundry, but that's okay. Haters and doubters everywhere. All right, after some quick sorting, part of the reason I also don't mind playing 18 lands is I have a Strip Mine and a Mox Emerald in a library, all as colorless lands, but I also have a lot of duels. So looking at this, funnily enough, no fetches. Uh, right now I've got one, two, three, plus Prism, four black sources. So I probably want like a Swamp or two. Hold on, before I do that. I have one, two red sources, so probably one mountain. Oh, I'm only putting in six more lands. I don't even know if I'll play a mountain then. Maybe I'll just play the two red sources plus the Pentad Prism. And that should be enough for wheel. If you can't cast it right away, it's not the end of the world. And then white, I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five white sources plus the Prism for two white cards. I mean, that also seems fine. <laughs> Uh, Sunken Ruins doesn't seem like a card. I really want, I guess I'd be, I guess I only have Sacred Foundry and Caracas that don't work with Sunken Ruins. That's not too bad. Well, let's see, because otherwise I kind of want four and two. If I have four islands, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I kind of want 11. Oh, no forest for sure. <laughs> uh... So sorting by color again. So this is 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, plus the prism. I, the thing is, I have Ancestral Brainstorm preared in. So I have a lot of ways to, if I have blue, to find other colors. And then this leaves me with, I think, enough white. I think enough black. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 black sources. Yeah, and 2 red plus prism. I almost have more white than I need, but I think that's all right. All right, let, let's try to see how this goes. All righty, time for round one. Let's, yeah, let's keep this. This is turn one, I got up Stern Scolding, and then turn two, I can V-click off this Mox. Though, honestly, I might end up targeting myself with the Vendillion Click. It'll kind of depend. Depend on what I draw, depend on what I see from them. I just have this Astral Dragon in hand, which is not only my, I think, weakest thing to flash in. It just makes two three threes, but also uh, I don't have the flash. So, And if I draw one of the tutors, I think I'll be happy to tutor for Ancestral instead. So in general, I think you should keep your moxes in your hand. Uh, it's The exception is against black decks. That changes. Um, you know what? Hey, Mulligan, I'm just going to draw stuff Vendillion them. I think that's a reasonable play to make. I have all my mana. So now I just need to either find Flash, in which case I'll, the dragon will make two permanents, or I'll make a, or find like an Ancestral or a draw seven or something. Their hand is Goblin Welder, Trinket Mage, Zerda, and Lands. Uh, I think... You know what? I think I'm going to take Mystic Confluence. It, it's a little early, but I just don't look. I look at my hand, and I'm not ending the game anytime soon. So even though on the one hand, yeah, I would have loved to not take anything for the exact reason that they could draw a mountain. First of all, Wilder doesn't do anything right now because Wilder is really bad. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Um, they have no artifacts right now. So if I let them take a turn, it'll we'll both put a land into play. And I'll counter their Trinket Mage. Uh, I guess that's fine. Plus, they might crack Relic. That would be nice, too. All right. I'll hit with this, and I'll give them another turn. It's actually a pretty reasonable turn to crack Relic. So by passing a turn on a wheel, I think I get more of an advantage because they get to use Relic for hopefully no gain. And then I get to Stern Scolding their Trinket Mage. They do a Spire Bluff. Okay. So that's reasonable. I take one. I guess they could play Zerda instead of Trinket Mage, but with a Welder in play, it seems a little tougher to play that. We'll see. Oh, they did play the Zerda, and now I can't counter it. So, oh, but I do a Spell Seeker. All right, so let's go. I think this is actually kind of a weird play, but I think I'm going to Spell Seeker for Swords. Swords the Zerda now, and then hit, because I think this sets up next turn. Stern Scolding, the Trinket Mage, and then Wheel. And 
kind of keep them from getting too much into play while doing so. The only card I know about right now is Trinket Mage. So I'm not too worried about that. Talisman, sure. And then Trinket Mage, wow, they, they, they've drawn like a pretty good sequence of plays here based on seeing their hand. It hasn't been busted or anything. It's just funny how they like drew the mountain for Welder and the second mountain for Zerda and then Talisman to play Trinket Mage. It's all kind of worked out nicely. All right, well, I guess I'm going to wheel both of us here and yeah, I'll play the Zagoth Trion. That's fine. And I'll just keep two blue up. Their hand is just two blue. Ooh, I drew a mana leak and a counter spell. I like that. All right, send. I'm glad they didn't have anything big in their hand. <laughs> it could have been a disaster. Oh, I guess I should have bobbled them. Not that it matters like a ton, but. Okay, Basalt Monolith. Well, countering it doesn't do anything with a Welder in play. I'm glad I've gotten rid of their Zerda. All right, I'm going to mana leak this most likely. Forensic Gadgeteer, yes, I will in fact mana leak that because if this is in play, their Basalt Monolith makes infinite mana. Not a big fan of that. If they can counter back, they probably can't go off this turn, and then next turn I can uh, Mystic Confluence, bounce it, and then recounter counter it on the way back. If that's an issue. And Odawara. <laughs> so they got mana leaked. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense though, because Odawara, when you have infinite mana, Odawara is a lot better than a land, so you might not have wanted to play it. But as it turns out, they, from their perspective at least, they got mana leaked with the ability to maybe get to three mana, so that's always a little bit awkward. And I'm going to bobble end of turn. Braze Apprentice is a decent one. Oh, they have a bobble coming too. All right. The Welder is going to be a little annoying now. Weld away, play Bobble, Weld Away Monolith for Bobble, like that sort of thing. Okay. Kaito and Spellbinder. Okay, I don't actually mind that. I guess uh, I can't really attack all that well. Uh, if I attack, I'll trade for the Thopter token. Yeah, actually, that's fine. It lets me draw a card off Kaito if I want to. Also, like, they can sack their thing to Brea's Apprentice, which is annoying. And... Now, I think I Elite Spellbinder. Let's see what's going on here. They're drawing a Mishra's Bobble. Then it's Karn Sai. Jeez, they have every single artifact token maker. Um, I guess hitting the Karn probably makes the most sense. It's the most expensive. And they have, I really don't want Sai to resolve, so... Let's just play Pentad Prism and ship the turn here. Kind of not loving this, but the main issue I have is I'm not really doing anything super powerful. Oh, they're welding out the Pentad Prism for a Mishra's Bobble. Sure, that's better for me. <laughs> Though it gives them the opportunity to now weld out Mox for another one. Third Path Iconoclast is fine. That I can put up with. The Psy, I'm not as into. Okay, that I will counterspell. And then they can still play a bobble. Yeah, now the world is kind of sick now. They can play bobble, make a 1-1 token, bobble me, and then weld out the bobble for, uh, weld out, weld out the token for a bobble. So it's like they get to draw a bunch of extra cards. They still have a Karn in exile here, but I get to attack them down to 10 what I need to find is Flash Worm or something along those lines. So they're going to sack the Basalt Monolith to play an extra card off the top. And they hit the island, sure. All right. And then they're going to weld in the Basalt Monolith. Why are they doing that? They can't cast Karn yet. Do they draw something else to cast? Hmm, I guess we'll find out. I have Mystic Confluence. Oh, let's see what they did find to cast here. This is the one new... Oh, no, Nettle Cyst. They already had that one, right? Okay, Nettle Cyst. Nettle Cyst doesn't worry me too much because they're not going to be able to attack with it for a little bit, and I have a Spell Seeker. More so, I just want to find something that will kill them because currently I'm not very close to doing that. Okay, I get to draw an extra card off the bobble here. Nice, 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 nice. All right, let's hit for three in the... Air, play Kaito. I'm going to draw a card off Kaito here. 
and I think drawing a card is going to be a lot better than making a 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one doesn't seem like it does much. All right, Ancestral's pretty good. Uh, do I want to bounce the Goblin Welder? What does that accomplish for me? It stops them from tapping it to draw a card. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. I'll pass the turn. Kaito fades away here. They get to bobble me. And they really should have done it in response to me drawing with Kaito, I think, because then they would know the card in my hand right now, which I guess could be kind of useful to know about Ancestral. I'm not sure. Okay, so now they have a lot of mana. The combination of Brea's Apprentice and Goblin Welder is pretty, pretty potent. Oh, what is this? I guess I'm glad I saved this Mystic Confluence. Because they have seven mana. They can play like a Ballista or a Hangerback or something, and then I will count it up. All right, they're putting in the Talisman. Interesting. Eight mana. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Yeah, no, I'm good with that. Counter target spell, bounce, draw a card. Because I can't play anything else this turn, so counter, bounce the Welder. And I think I'd rather do that than, than draw another card. I think I'll, I will spend one of my cards on a zero mana bounce spell. All right, Gruff Triplets isn't really what I'm asking for here. I could have bounced my spell seeker too, but I'm going back to Ancestral and I can draw a card off Kaito so I can see a third of my remaining cards next turn and I didn't really not want to waste three more mana playing spell seeker. I figured my mana might be a little impacted. All right, I guess I'll take it or is now a good time to chump. I guess now's a fine time to chump the the germ token. Okay, I go to 13. Draw Let's draw again. I think I might need World Spine to, to get me out of this, but we'll see. I guess Urtai Resurrected is actually kind of nice too. Hit. You're on seven. So what I could do, Kaito make a ninja, play a tar pit, and then I'm threatening seven unblockable damage. I'm at 13. Uh, that's six, nine. I mean... If you attack with, if they attack with the Brea's Apprentice, that's enough to, to kill me, but then I can play Urtai. Alternately, I can draw a card. No, I think I would rather, there's not that many cards I could draw that would put a whole lot of pressure into play. So even though I missed kind of hard on that Ancestral, I drew an Urtai in all lands. I guess Urtai, the Gruff Triplets in all lands were like my last five draws or whatever, but this still puts me in a decent position to try to win the game. Mana Crypt, okay. That's fine. We're going to play the Karn here, I guess. Mm. Yeah, Karn is also fine. And then I'm going to want to play this Urtai. What am I going to do with it? I guess it kind of depends what they've done. I just wanted to save it because I can block. Okay, now they're going to sack the Mana Crypt to exile the top card of their deck. It's a Dreddy. Does Dreddy do anything? Uh, they can get back a Bobble or a Basalt Monolith. I don't, I don't really think it does anything. <laughs> my extremely motley crew of elite spellbinder creeping tar pit and ninja token looking to finish the game here but i think i'm actually fine now because they, they have lethal if they attack technically but obviously uh i'm gonna play this urtai yeah they have to attack with everything and i'm gonna chump the germ I don't... Am I supposed to kill one of these Planeswalkers? I kind of want to just do none. Because I don't really want them drawing a card, and I don't think any of their Planeswalkers do anything. So I'll go to eight. They're just, they're tapped out. They have one card in hand. Like, what, what could they do? 
They can discard with Duretti, and I don't really know what that does. They can plus or minus with Karn. I guess if they plus Karn into two zero mana artifacts, and I had to give them one, and then they could... I guess if they got LED, and then they could play LED, but I don't think that's going to do a whole lot either. Okay, there's your 10-10, sure. And you've got a Duretti activation going here, too. I think what they actually wanted to do was sacrifice this so they could Duretti this back and make a 1-1. One -one. They discard their welder. Oh, I guess that was even their last card. All right. Look, we squeaked across, across the finish line, but uh, you don't get extra points for winning by a lot. So I think this, <laughs> this somehow works out. They're probably just like, I had so much more stuff in play. Well, yeah, they did, but my idiots got there. Um... Yeah, yeah, this this all seems fine to me. I don't really see a reason to change anything. All right, well, game two, I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this hand. And yeah, I will keep this and I think just put send Astral Dragon to the bottom. Caracas also looks especially good against an opponent who's got Psy and Zerda. Turn on Mana Crypt's going to be tough. I don't think that's going to be the easiest. Oh, geez, okay. They've got a lot of mana. If they play like a turn one Karn, I'm definitely not beating that. Even a turn on Trinket Mage is going to be pretty tough. I assume they've got another card to go fetch in their deck here. Re oh, Retrofitter Foundry, too. What a turn one. Okay, I gotta. guess I got to see if I can find my own Ancestral for some actual action. All right, I do think I'm going to play turn one Prism, though. No real reason to play preordain, or I can just play my two mana spell, and no reason to use a counter off Prism to play it, to play the preordain either. Okay, they cracked their bubble. I'm shipping the turn. They get to win the flip and draw an extra card. Retrofitter this early with this much mana is going to be pretty tough. I I do like that Flash gives me a decent shot. Just flashing in three World Spine Worm tokens is pretty hard to to deal with, but it feels like they're going to be doing a bit more stuff than I can handle this game. Maybe at some point Toxic Deluge is decent. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I really want to use Strip Mine here. Let's just start with Preordain. Creeping Tar Pit and Urtai. I mean, Urtai Caracas is kind of nice, but I think I'm just going to bottom these. Oh, World Spine is actually not that bad. Go play a Tap Talon. I'm not, I'm not using Strip Mine on their normal lands when they could have an Academy in their deck. And the way things are currently going, they're getting better value from each turn passing than me. So I think Strip Mine to like kind of set us both back one land doesn't sound good. Yeah, I don't mind actually seeing World Spine because now I got, I can see Flash, Mystical Tutor, or Spellseeker. And try to assemble that combo. Let's see if they've got... I mean, if they play Zerda here, then they can just make infinite tokens. Though I guess my uh, Toxic Deluge does actually solve that. They don't really need to play anything, given their uh, Retrofitter situation. Oh, but they are playing something, and it's large. Nice. <laughs> uh, is this like an Ugin? Oh, Beer Battle Ball. Well... At least I guess I have enough life total or life points to deluge. And if I could just draw a flash. Bobble. Oh, I guess what I can do here is I can strip mine the mountain. And then that'll force them to either use retrofitter or not. But now the retrofitter can't make a token end of turn, which is nice. Deluge for seven. Kill all your stuff. Okay, bobble you, because if I want to draw, if I if I if I if I have flash on top, I want to draw it now. They're drawing Spider Bluff Canal, and they have one card in hand. All right, I mean, well, that's a flash next turn. We actually could win this game, especially if they start losing Mana Crypt flips. They they've lost one so far. All right, they have one card in hand. Yeah, this actually could be decent here. So let's go ahead and. Play the Caracas, because there's no reason not to have it in play. Cast Spellseeker. 
The thing that's a little awkward for them is they know I could spell seeker for ancestral and I chose flash instead. So you got to think, okay, <laughs> that's probably coming, but what can you do? So they can go make a token, untap the retrofitter and sack the token and make a 1-1 flyer, or they could just untap basalt monolith. I probably would just untap basalt monolith just because... If they hit a big spell, maybe that's better. But I, I don't know their deck. They know their deck. So, all right. Be nice if they lost this flip. Okay, because now at least the World Spine Worms are lethal. They have to do something to block them. They can make a 4-4 four -four to block one, but that's not going to cut the mustard, as it were. I mean, I guess they take 11. They, they die to a Mana Crypt flip if all they do is block with the 4-4, four -four, but I kind of assume they'll do better than that. All right, let's try to cast Flash. They have one card in hand. All right. Flash and World Spine Worm. They need something good here. I'm, hopefully, I don't re redraw the World Spine. All right. Well, let's just hit with everything. I think attacking the Spell Seeker is actually quite important because now, if they sack the token to make a 4 4, block the worm, they go to three and die to a Mana Crypt flip. So I imagine they're going to be doing more than that. All right. So they're making a 1 1. Still have to do more than that. All right, untap it. So I guess if they block the one one on the spell seeker, block the four four on the worm. Oh no, they take they take eleven then because the 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 worm has trample and the I have three of them. So the spell seeker actually didn't really matter attacking with it, but obviously I think it's just better to do so than not. I guess they can double block a worm now. That's going to be their best block. Yeah. All right. Uh, they go to three, so now they're straight up 50-50 to die off Mana Crypt. And even if they don't, they're potentially facing down, you know, two lethal worms plus a spell seeker. They won the flip, so they have an opportunity to to do something here. The, the thing is, even if they do, they still have a Mana Crypt in play. So every turn that that's true, they, they have to try to, to dodge that. Uh-oh, what is this? Is this the Ugin? Oh, they found the Ugin. So now they can minus Ugin. Minus three Ugin. All right. Uh, my worms go away. My spell seeker goes away. And now they're at three with a mana crypt flip. Uh, I guess it doesn't really do much to play the elite spell binder, but I guess it keeps the Ugin away from me. Okay, play land past the turn. Let's see if they fade another mana crypt flip here. And they won the flip again. Okay. They can Ugin. They're going to plus Ugin. It's not clear whether you shoot the Spellbinder or me, because they do have Retrofitter, but I guess it's safer just to kill the Spellbinder. So right now they have no cards in hand. They can make a token, untap the Retrofitter, make a token. They can make a 4-4, four, four. so I'm dead now to them attacking me for 4 and then Uginning me. All right, Let's see if they can win the third Mana Crypt flip in a row to win this game. Though it's more than that because they actually have had Mana Crypt in play the whole time and have lost, I think, one flip. No, it might have been two. Who's keeping track? Me, kind of. <laughs> All right, do your thing. Yeah, nothing else is, is going on this game. I mean, they have to go through all this because they need to actually win the game if they win the, the Mana Crypt flip, but... You know, we'll, we'll see how this works out. I guess if they needed to draw a land land to play Ugin and to threaten lethal, those are those cards I could, I'm sure they could have drawn that were even better. Mana Crypt flip, let's go. Ah, they lost the flip. Finally, a little bit of justice. <laughs> and that'll do it. We are one and zero. We take those. All right, time for round two on the play. Yeah, this is a fine hand. Turn two, Prism, turn three, Kaito. I mean, technically I could go turn two, Prism, turn three, Mystic Confluence, though I'm not super interested in doing that. And I've got Astral Dragon just in case I need to cast a bad flash. <laughs> I really wish this deck had a Force of Will, both because Force of Will is just a fantastic card, but also a way to pitch this Astral Dragon would be kind of nice. Oh, Caracas, huh? All right. Caracas is generally just a good card to have in hand. It didn't really come up at all last match but it came close and Caracas is amazing all right so they could have some sort of counter spell up oh let's do this this is way better strip mine a tri land 
Oh, we're just gonna throw that one out there. Okay, makes sense. And then play Kaito. And then hmm, minus two the Kaito or not? I mean, it's gonna phase out, so I'm I'm not worried about the Cathar Commando. Um, I'm just deciding if I want a plus one at this turn or next turn. I think I'd rather plus one at this turn. I guess just discard the Astral Dragon. That's fine. And then this phases out. And then next turn, I'm probably just going to want to minus two it so that I can block the Cathar Commando because I don't really want Kaito to just get attacked down. That's kind of nice. Why don't I cast Ancestral Recall? Oh. All right. Let's minus two and then play library. And if I don't have to use a spell this turn, then I can start librarying. I probably am gonna have to mana leak, but you never know. Okay, we'll definitely block here. All right. If they don't have a play this turn, it's so bad for them. Monastery Mentor, yeah, yeah, I am gonna have to turn scolding that, unfortunately. I can't let a mentor resolve with this hand. All right, draw. It's plus one Kaito. Uh, I kind of think this is just not going to be a Wheel of Fortune game. So I'm going to discard it. Because I, I, I like all my other cards. I've got Mana Leak. I've got uh, Mystic Confluence. I guess, actually, maybe I should have just kept up Mystic Confluence. Though I thought I could just do that later. Uh, Mana Crypt, okay. Oh, what is this? Four mana? Luris of the Dream Den. Wow, really punished for uh, not keeping up Mystic Confluence, I suppose. All right, I guess I'll mana leak it. Force them to pay three. And then I can Caracas it and still Mystic Confluence it later. But it was just, that was just kind of a nice self own here. Caracas, Bouncer Luris, pass the turn. Next turn, I'm going to Mystic Confluence, counter it, and counter it again, and then draw a card, I guess is going to be the plan here. So that puts me up to four cards. Oh, wow, that worked out way better. All right, well, in that case, I'll counter this and draw two cards. Assuming they don't have, like, a reprieve or something, of course. And then... This actually lets me uh, hit, get to library, because now I go up to six, attack with the ninja, and then draw off Kaito and don't have to discard. Okay, that, that actually worked out really well. Plus one, draw a card. Draw a card. Um, let's play Volcanic Sure Elite Spellbinder. Spellbinder you and your hand is Parallax Wave Luris. Yeah. Which one do I want to make more expensive? I guess the, the one I want to counterspell is Luris. So I'll just make the Parallax Wave more expensive and then bobble you. So I guess I could have done that the other way. All right. And then pass the turn. Draw with the bobble. Ooh, brainstorm's not bad. Okay, so now they can play Luris and I can counter it. And then they can. Or they can cast Parallax Wave. Eh, I'll just counter that too. I'm using up all, all my counter spells, but I feel like that's going to be a lot better. And then now I will definitely block the Season Hallow Blade with my Elite Spellbinder if they want to discard their Prismatic Ending. Which I guess they have to. Well, they don't have to, but Prismatic Ending is probably better as a zero mana Hallow Blade than it is an uh, ending stuck in hand. Oh, Urtai? Yeah. Library and Kaito are just fueling me, just countering their spells every turn. Now I have Urtai Caracas too, which is sick. Draw a card. Oh. Uh, I could. I could do it all, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and draw a card, and in response, I'm gonna Mystical. 
Actually, in response to that, I'm going to brainstorm. <laughs> All right, so let's brainstorm. Yes, Jules. Put back Hallowed Fountain and Swamp, I guess. Oh, actually, I should have put back. Yeah, whatever. Let's get Flash and then draw off Library. I guess I should have put back Island, but we'll be OK. Play a land and then pass the turn. And then they have Lurus in hand. They can cast it. I think I'm just going to, I think I am going to flash here. Put Gruff Triplets into play. Um, yeah, you got to make sure to stack those correctly. <laughs> All right, they, they died. Really, they died to me just drawing two cards a turn is, is basically what happened. I don't really have a sideboard, so I'm not going to pretend like I do. Yeah, on to game two. All right, this hand is pretty great. A little slow on the draw. But uh, opponent is mulliganing. If they open on Mana Crypt on the play, then you know, good luck. I guess we beat that in round one. But Mana Crypt and Mox Jet. Go you. I mean, I have Ancestral Mox. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that's a good, good set of cards to have. All right. Well, they're going to Cathar Commando. So, uh, yeah. I mean, if they're on the play and they go two drop, three drop, uh, my, my two drop counter spells on the draw are not going to be good enough. That is definitely true. Oh, well, I drew Deluge, and they didn't play anything, so those are two dubs. Cycle Rafine's Tower. Okay, I'm in for that. I can take six, nine. I mean, I'm already taking six at this point, but I can take nine or 12 damage off Cathar Commando, and I still think I'd have a pretty good chance of winning. So not too concerned here. Mm, Give her runes, sure. Draw... I mean, at this point, I just need to find a, a black source for Toxic Deluge, but it looks like I'll be able to wait a few turns here. Take another four. Attack with Giver is a good play. A lot of people don't do that enough. All right, no plays. Oh, Ancestral, that's nice too. I'll take one more hit. I'll go to six, that's fine. I might need two counter spells up this turn. And... All right, end of turn. I'm going to Ancestral myself. And, oh, I guess... I guess I'll Mystical Tutor to get Flash, draw, land, and rather than discard, I think I am going to cast Flash here. I'm going to put Astral Dragon into play. And then I'm going to copy their swamp. Mm -hmm. Pass the turn. And then now I can deluge if I need to. If they're killing one of my tokens, I, I don't care too much. Shielders Edict. Uh, sure. And if they're attacking with just Cathar Commando... Uh, I guess I'll go to three. All right. And then next turn, I'll cast Toxic Deluge going down to one. So I hope this is a two power creature. <laughs> Luris of the Dream Den. Okay. Kind of surprising to just play that, I guess. But let's cast Toxic Deluge. Paying two life. And now I'm at one, but I've got two counter spells up and they have one card in their hand. All right. I guess I'll play a Pentad Prism as well. If I have to use both my counter spells, then playing the Prism was unfortunate, but it's like an investment because I don't think it's a gamble that I'm not going to have to use both. I guess I don't like that one very much. All right. I'll counter spell your him. What's your follow up? Is it sick? Mm -hmm. Swords? Oh, sure. I can't mean a leak even if I wanted to, and I don't think I want to. Also, I do I do want the uh, prism to be in play for black mana, because this Kaito needs some help. All right, let's draw and discard. I feel like uh, I feel like this mana leak isn't the best in the world. 
if I draw a land, I'm, I'm definitely getting rid of the land. If I draw, I mean, I guess it, ooh, a Vendillion click. Yeah, let's get rid of the mana leak. There's just so few things that can actually mana leak, and I think Storm Scolding's still going to be good. All right, if Kaito phases out, draw step. I'm going to V click here. I think that's better than playing the Spellbinder. She got Parallax Wave. Yeah, I will take that, actually. <laughs> That was like the only spell in their deck I could mana leak, but I don't want Parallax. Parallax Wave when I'm at four life is way too dangerous. All right, well now I don't even have to discard anymore because I get to attack with this. And plus one Kaito. And then Elite Spellbinder them. Look at their land, I'm sure. Yeah, play the Tar Pit and pass the turn. And they don't have a lot of time here before uh, these three things take them down. Uh oh damn damn all right damn is good i mean i'm glad they have it in their deck because it's really bad generally against me but it did it worked out here oh well swamp was actually not a bad draw because now i get to go creeping tar pit take them on a little creeping tar pit ride here so the clock definitely got shortened but the, the kind of real clock is this kaito just drawing two cards a turn i i guess i don't have a lot of defenses now but all right, well, I'll stern scolding that. They have no cards. They're, they're, I'm drawing two cards a turn, and I get the first crack at it here. Oh, uh, Urtai. I still have a counter on that Pentad Prism, so I think Urtai is going to basically close this out. Hit for three down to nine. What is the ultimate? When you when your creature you control does combat damage, search your, to a player, you get a blue or black creature and put it on the battlefield. Oh, man, my Astral Dragon's already gone. All right, I'm going to invest in my future. I'm going to play a library. I'm going to think we're not getting to library here, I don't think. It doesn't does not seem very likely. In fact, I'm even going to tap the library cuz I don't think it's happening this turn either. Well, it's definitely not. All right, well now now that I've got I'll play the mocks just in case. I I'm not, I'm not keeping library man up. Now that I've got Urtai up and they're at 6, feels like it's pretty much game. And uh, I think we're on to the finals. We'll see, we'll see. Yep, well, that'll do it. 2-0, and oh. let's get to the finals here. All right, time for round three, and ooh, there's a library. All right, well, we'll see if uh, the, the library hype is real. No, they inquisitioned me? Not only are they going to take my flash, it delays my library? <sighs> what a beating. All right, well, the good news is the inquisition might you know, generally doesn't signal the most aggressive of decks. So if I can go library go, and they don't have another discard spell, then I still get to get on the library train here. It would be unfortunate if they did. What is this? <laughs> they have duress too? Unbelievable. Okay, okay. And I drew mana leak, so they actually have something to take. I'm probably just not going to play a land next turn. Oh, do they have also pressure? No, they're cycling troll, which could lead to pressure. This is a planes, yeah because they could reanimate it. But uh, the hand destruction spells are good. Are they getting Rafine's Tower? Yeah, I'm just going to stand firm unless I drew an Ancestral. Actually, Toxic Deluge is another reason to to slow play it a little bit here. Because it, it does a decent job of catching you up, obviously. Could still get owned here. Palantir, wow, what an ideal draw. Hand disruption, hand disruption into Palantir when your opponent's on library. All right, well... Let's see if we can get back in here. I would not like you to draw a card. I take two, sure. Draw a card. And then I'll play Sea Chrome Coast because I want to leave up Stern Scolding. And as it turns out, Swords to Plowshares. Palantir is a good one. Okay, well, they're not doing anything else. I'll, I'll take another hit off Palantir here. I don't, I don't really think it makes sense not to. I took two more damage. All right, that's fine. Mm, brainstorm. I'm at eight cards. I'm just deciding which land to play. I could also play Pentad Prism. Yeah, I kind of like doing that. Let's draw. And let's play Pentad Prism. Because I have a bunch of cards in my hand, which I don't think I'm that likely to need to cast. Oh, Mana Tithe? Okay. Sure. That doesn't bother me too much. Good to know about. 
Okay, Guardian Scale Lord. All right, I will just Swords that. And I'm going to deny them a draw once again, but this is probably the last turn I can do that. Their, their deck also doesn't look... I mean, they have Exhumed, so they have some Reanimator. It doesn't look too expensive mostly, but we'll see. I took 11. I just made them bin Grief, Solitude, Turok. But I also wouldn't have rather had them draw those cards, so I'm not super concerned. Uh, let's just go Tar Pit Go. And they're going to get to start drawing cards off Palantir now. I'm going to Swords that. Oh, I'm so dumb. I was supposed to Library first. I just kind of blanked on that. Well, I hope I don't lose here. Um, let's Brainstorm. And then on Upkeep, I'm going to put back World Spine and Urtai. Because unfortunately, that flash being gone is a, is a bit of a beat. I do have to give them a card here. This looks like a pretty good black-white control sort of deal. All right, let's Mystical Tutor. Let's get Ancestral and Ancestral up here to eight, and then play a land. Go to seven. All right. I guess I can also preordain here. Though, if I draw a counterspell, I have exactly counterspell to draw off of a, a thing. A Wandering Emperor. Mm, all right, I guess that's fine. Yeah, losing a library card was, was not ideal, but I also think uh, I don't have the easiest position just based on the, the Palantir is, is is pressuring me pretty pretty nicely. Oh, okay. It's kind of going to work out to Toxic Deluge here because they didn't put a counter on it, which is nice because now I get to use my last life points for that. I kind of hope they play another small creature. That would be that would be awesome. Uh, I don't like whatever this is. Is this the Mind Twist or something? Mind twist for five. All right, let's draw a card. If it's not exactly counterspell, yeah. All right, all right. That I got put a little too far behind there. Library did its best, but duress, duress into Palantir is a pretty strong start. I don't see anything here that really I want to add in because I don't have a sideboard. But you know what? Let's let's try that again. All right. Uh, I would like to play first, despite having library. And oh, I would like to ancestral first as well. Let's not get mana tithes, huh? Let's go upkeep. I'm going to Ancestral myself here. And I wouldn't mind drawing a mock so I wouldn't have to discard. <laughs> but they're probably going to duress me anyway, so now I don't have to. Win-win. They can take Spellseeker or Stern Scolding or Elite Spellbinder, kind of whichever is going to cause them the most distress. But I'm really glad they actually had the disruption because now I don't have to discard to hand size. So it's like they barely got anything out of their spell. I guess whatever they make me discard is going to be a little better than whatever I was going to be forced to discard, but still. Or chose choose to discard, rather. All right, so now... Okay, let's just play Tar Pit, pass the turn. Have Stern Scolding up, not that that does too much, though if they pitch cast Grief, Stern Scolding is a beating. If they're, but they would have taken the, the Stern Scolding if that's what their plan was, so presumably it is not. I do wish the Mystic Confluence was like a couple cards down in my deck, because if they duress me and take the Confluence now, it's going to be pretty annoying. Yeah, all right. Oh, well. I still get to, to play a Spellbinder and at least see what's coming. Guess I'll play my Caracas too in case I get hemmed or something. Okay, Elite Spellbinder. And then I'll have Urtai up after that. All right, their hand is Bone Shards, Turok, and Dam. All right, well, I'm going to take the Turok. I have Stern Scolding in hand, and now I could just know I just need to save it until, they're, until they have enough mana to Turok me. Or say keep make sure to keep it up on, on the turn they're going to Turok. Do they really just draw Palantir? Or is this a Vindicate? Oh, Gix. Uh, sure, I do have a Caracas in play, so Gix doesn't do a whole lot. Oh. 
Yeah, actually, strip mine your swamp, bounce your Gix, hit, and I'm going to save the brainstorm because they, they might have more hand disruption. So having brainstorm up will be, would be kind of nice. All right, well, they drew the, the swamp here, I guess. I mean, if they want to keep playing, hitting with Gix, that, or playing Gix and getting it bounced, that's fine. Sure. I'll just wait on the brainstorm. I have I have stuff to play next turn. Doesn't really seem necessary. Sure, I'll play my island. Pass the turn. Hmm. Do I want to urtie this Gix? Their hand now is bone shards, planes, and something else. I'm just gonna wait here. Pentad Prism. I'm just going to play it. Hallowed Fountain, Pangle Life. Because what I might end up doing here is casting an end of turn Urtai if they don't do anything. They have five mana, so they're not quite there. All right, let's cast Urtai. Oop. And then leave up the Caracas to protect it. Okay, draw. Hit with Urtai. And now, now that I have nothing else good to play, I guess I'll brainstorm here. Poof. <laughs> no shuffle effects here, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, what do we want to do? I guess I'll put Sacred Foundry. And I want to play Vendillion. I guess I'll just Vendillion myself a bunch. So I'll put Sacred Foundry and Pentad Prism on top. Or maybe I'll put Worm on top, play land, and then pass the turn. I'm just not going to... I guess I'm just not going to Vendillion them, because I can bounce and replay Urtai if I really need to. Oh, there, is this going to be the Turok? Yeah. Let's turn scolding that. Okay, they have a Bone Splinters in hand that I don't care about at all. I'm actually going to Vendillion myself and put Pentad Prism back. And I think I'm going to be doing a decent amount of this. And I draw the worm, draw the island, or the, the Sacred Foundry, and hit. And even if I had another black, I wouldn't be animating Tar Pit yet. Though I guess, mm, maybe actually, let's see, one, two, three, four. No, I don't need the mana. Maybe it actually doesn't make sense to to put Prism back instead of Mox because I could activate Tar Pit next turn. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't right. I mean, I think I am going to probably use Caracas this turn in some form or fashion, but there's a pretty good chance I would actually have been able to attack for lethal. Though, I can still find a black source fairly easily, I would imagine. Bone Splinters. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce that, or try to, and then while the Bone Splinters is still on the stack, I was going to V-click them. <laughs> and then I was going to draw Kaito and play that, and that would have been good. All right. Yeah, I think we're ready to face off against Black-White once again. All right, so game three. This isn't the best hand, but I'm just not really interested in mulliganing a bunch against someone who's going to duress me on turn one every single game. Like, they're clearly going to. They have a bunch of hand disruption. I should just keep a, a 7 here. And, uh, I mean, this is not a very good 7, but most of the most of my hands are going to get a lot worse once they're duressed anyways. Okay, what's their follow-up? Nothing so far. Black Source wouldn't be bad. Uh, I'll play a Sacred Foundry tap. That's fine. If I can draw a black next turn, I'll be pretty happy. If they play like a Gix or something here, this could be pretty bad for me. No, no plays. Okay. But they just like... Oh, Mystical Tutor is actually kind of nice. Just go get Ancestral. But they just like snapped off taking Stern Scolding instead of taking Mystic Confluence. They must have a Grief here. Oh, Turok. All right. Sure. It's just mystical for ancestral and hope Turok doesn't destroy me. No, it got my two two of my three spells, of course, but that's all right. 
including the one that I actually would have gotten to play if I Ancestral and a black mana next turn. All right, well, let's Ancestral. World Spine Worm Flash. Ew, this is a really bad Ancestral hand. All right, I might end up losing this one. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. If I can nab a decent mana leak this turn and then draw black, maybe, but hitting Mystic Confluence was the was the beat. Like, that's the, the one card I really didn't want to lose, and then losing my other spell was also pretty bad. Oh, Guardian Scale Lord. Okay. Take four here. I could also draw, like, Wheel of Fortune. It would be a pretty nice one. Spellseeker wouldn't do too much here. Oh, Pentat Prism. Okay. So now I can tap this for mana. And I can play around. Uh, I don't really need to Urtai the, the Turok. I can just block it with Urtai. And then I can just counter their next spell, maybe. I mean, they know about the Urtai, but I think that's okay. Nah, if they're not doing anything, I'm fine. Ooh, Preordain. There we go. That's, that's some action. Wheel of Fortune World Spine. I'm going to put... Actually, you know what? Uh, I'm going to put them both on top. This is like a bit of a gamble. He, here's why. I, I want our Urtai to kill their Turok. I want them to be happy just attacking me and, you know, not doing anything else. And then a wheel. And I But I didn't want the wheel to be vulnerable to hand disruption. Just pass the turn. You don't need to do anything. You've got an Ur you've got Turok in play. You're hitting for four a turn. You're playing around my Urtai by not casting spells here. It's actually really smart. <laughs> I actually have enough mana. I could Urtai and then cycle Odawara or channel o Odawara as well. N once Urtai is in play, it only costs three. So even if they play something, I'm probably going to go like counter it with Urtai, end of turn, bounce your Turok, untap Wheel of Fortune. And I'm just using the World Spine Worm as a buffer in case they had like a Mind Twist or something. Which, again, I guess I could just Urtai, but I, I didn't I didn't think whatever card I drew off the Preordain, if I left Wheel on top, given that I wasn't casting it next turn, was going to do much. It's like my next card I could have maybe cast, but I'm not too worried about that. All right, let's go Urtai. And now I'm going to get to Wheel away my world spine and they they're uh they're gonna have six cards in their hand when they discard here now uh, i don't even think i play the odawara no i should i should i should that's fine oh maybe i should have attacked i should have definitely attacked first because now they're going to kill my urtai if they have a removal spell <laughs> Sure. Pitch cast solitude, fine. Uh, Alright, and wheel. They discard a bunch of spells. <laughs> Alright, and World Spine gets shuffled back in. I've got a library here, but I don't think it's very realistic to to try to go for library. In fact, I am just not not even gonna bother. Because I have to play the Elite Spellbinder this turn, and I'm probably going to play something else. Or at least have the option to. I don't know. Okay, Spellbinder you. Hand is... That's your hand, and you didn't cycle the troll. Oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. They have way too much to want to cycle the troll. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll take the troll. And they're drawing a planes. That's kind of nice. All right. Wow, I wheeled them into kind of crap. <laughs> we might actually win this one. Hmm. Okay. Maybe playing the Mox. Yeah, but even if I didn't play the Mox, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it still wouldn't be librarying. Okay. You got a Yawgmoth, I guess. Caracas would be kind of nice. Okay, let's draw. I'm going to have to fire off the Brainstorm here almost for sure. Oh. Spellseeker 2. Okay. Brainstorm. Let's just put library back. Actually, do I want to put Zagoth Triumph back? I think I do. I think I'd rather just have Untapped Swamp. Yeah, and then 
I'm going to go Caracas, Bouncy Ogmoth, hit for three. And let's see, three for Spellseeker. Oh, man, I have enough mana to do it all. I can Spellseeker for Flash, and I can cast Flash plus Vendillion click here. So I'm going to take Flash, say go. Draw step, I'm going to Vendillion click them. And I, do I have lethal? Yeah, that, that that's enough to win. Let's go ahead and V-click you. Your hand is Recurring Nightmare. And Yogmoth, what does Recurring Nightmare get? It gets Solitude, Flicker Wisp. So, I could take the Yogmoth and then they have Recurring Nightmare. And nothing, but if, no, let's just take the Recurring Nightmare. It just feels like it's way too risky to do otherwise. And the Yawgmoth, I can just bounce with Caracas. It doesn't really do that much. Oh, what did they draw? Are they going to Mind Twist me? No, that's not really going to, that's not really going to do anything, but okay. Uh, flash, put in the Gruff Triplets. Um... Stack the order correctly and and a nice little 3 0. That was that last round was actually pretty tough. Uh, but I mean this this deck was really good. It it wasn't busted, but I mean look, having mana leak, counterspell, and stern scolding as cheap counters, obviously ancestral's busted, brainstorm, mystical, preordain, like a lot of cheap look card interaction, uh, or ways to look at cards rather. Spell seeker to find ancestral or flash, and then flash with a plus world spine worm, kind of like B, gruff triplets, and C, <laughs> both in terms of grades and order, uh, astral dragon. The whole like Caracas, Urtai, Vanillion click thing was good. Having swords is good. Even the wheel was pretty good, especially against black, white, all duresses. So yeah, nice little, and a mox emerald never hurts. Nice little trophy there. And uh, even though library didn't really come out to play too much, though, no, one of the other games, it was really good. But that'll do it for today. We cleaned up here, got a nice little trophy. And uh, you know what? I will be back tomorrow. I always appreciate you hanging out as I draft a variety of flash decks, starting with Ancestral Mox. That's a, that's a pretty nice one. But like I said, there will be another draft up tomorrow, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.